Hi folks, today we're going to take a look at some of the uh, functions on the TI Inspire calculator, in particular those that have to do with solving equations. Uh, so we're going to go through a few examples together. First example here is just solving a very typical quadratic equation. Uh, so obviously here you'd normally either try to factor it or use the quadratic formula, but if you do have access to the TI Inspire, you can have it do the work for you. So if you go to your home screen on your uh, TI Inspire, you have a, two choices. You can either work on your scratch pad, so that's just this button here, okay, uh, or you can go back and you can use the calculator app, which is just down there. That's the one I'll use here. And uh, anytime you want to do something on the Inspire, even if you're not sure how to do it, a uh, good bet is to just press the menu button. So we look here and we see got lots of stuff, and in particular number three is algebra. And if I open that up, I see that the first option is to solve. So by the way, you'll notice here that this will factor for you. It will expand. If you put in a function, it'll find the zeros, similar to what we're doing here. does lots of different things. So you can play around with any one of those, and usually it's fairly intuitive as to how to input. In fact, this here will give you a good idea on how to do that. So let's go to solve. Uh, so what it's waiting for is it's waiting for an equation and it's waiting for the uh, variable which you're solving. Now in this case here we're only solving uh, one variable equations so it'll always be whatever variable you have. So let's put in 2x squared uh, plus 3x minus 6 equals 0. Okay, let's put that up so you can see that. And what it's also waiting for is the variable. So on x, so just use comma, which just to show you here, the comma button is at the very bottom corner. Okay, x, and then you just press enter, and it gives you your answers. Now, it always defaults to the um, exact answer, but if you notice above the enter sign here, you've got the approximation sign, so you can just press control, enter, and that'll give you the approximated answers. Okay, so again, you can input any type of equation into this uh, solve, uh, and as long as it, there is a there is a uh, there is an answer, it'll do it for you. Now we will see an example later on as to what it will look like when there is no answer. Okay, so the next example we're going to look at is the example of solving a trig equation. So look at example two, and we know that trig equations can get interesting because there may not just be one, two, three answers, there could be infinitely many answers as this equation will have. Okay, so let's see how that looks like on the Inspire. So let's start again by, just as we did before, uh, going to menu, going to algebra, solve, and let's input the equation. So we have three and sign, don't forget there's a trig button here, just press it and choose whichever trig function you need, in this case here sine, 4x, and then plus 5, and we want to know when that is equal to 2. Okay, so let's see what happens. Oh, let's not forget, we have to tell it that we're solving for x. Okay, so we press enter, and then here we see, uh, interesting, we see this little n1. What does that little n1 stand for? Well, it just represents any integer is here looks like let's see what the answers would be so if we input okay let's just move that along here if we input let's try to hide the next example okay let's input n equals zero and what do we have well four times zero is zero minus one so we have negative pi over eight so x equals negative pi over eight would be one answer but Let's input n equals 1. So 4 minus 1, 3 pi over 8. So 3 pi over 8 would be another answer. We can also input negative 1. So 4 times negative, negative 4 minus 1, negative 5 pi over 8. Negative 5 pi over 8. And so on and so forth. Okay? So that's what this represents. Now you might wonder why n1. Well, just because it's the first one we're using in this example. Okay, if we solve another equation on this screen, we're going to see that it's just going to use n2. So that's all that represents. Now, as before, we see a default to the uh, exact answer. As we did before, we'll just control enter, and that'll give us the answers uh, in approximated form. And you'll see here, because this is the second example we're working on, use n2. 
and it goes up to N99 and then starts again at N1. So don't worry about the number, just remember that this just represents uh, a particular integer that can change. Now, infinitely many solutions, but if you think to a lot of the examples you worked with, say this function here, y equals 3 sine 4x plus 5, was representing the motion of a spring, you might only be interested in the solutions within a particular domain. So often when you're solving these equations, you're only interested in the solutions within a particular range of values. Okay, so one thing you could do is just keep inputting the integers into the answers and then figure out which ones lie between 0 and 5. Or, again, the TI Inspire can save you a lot of time. So what you can do is solve that equation and tell it what range of values you're interested in. Now, neat trick if you don't know this yet is instead of having to retype this whole thing, I can just use my arrow to go back up. And as I would do on a computer program, I would just do Control C to save it, okay, or to copy it. Bring my cursor down and then Control V, okay and it just pastes it for me. Okay, So I want to solve this same equation. However, I want to solve it only on those values. And here we're going to use a symbol that you should be familiar with. We want to say solve this equation such that 0 lies between 0 and 5. So the such that lies above the equal sign. It's one, we'll see it's one of the options. So control equal sign and it opens up this little menu and we see that the such that lies right here. So such that 0 is less than or equal to, well, you find that in the same spot, if you happen to have noticed it. There you go, less than or equal to x, and less than or equal to, say, we'll choose 5. Okay, press Enter, and we see that it only gives you those answers that lie in that interval. Again, of course, if we want the approximated, control Enter and we see that there's only three solutions within that uh, range of values. So that's a big time saver for us. Okay, now let's go back to this idea of this representing some function. So let's say this y equals 3 sine 4x plus 5, again, say represented the motion uh, of a spring with respect to time. Well, you might not just be interested in when the function is equal to 2, you might need to calculate when it's equal to 3, 3.5, 3.1. Uh, so what we can do is instead of having to either retype this function over and over again or having to go back up and copying and pasting, we can define a function on the TI Inspire. So here that's what we're going to do now, is we're actually going to define this function that we can now use. Okay, so let's go back to our Okay, and the way you define a function is you just write out its equation. So say 3 sine 4x plus 5. Now again, I could have copied and pasted and erased what I didn't need. Okay, and what you use, you use the store button, which if you see here, just above the variable button. So control var. Okay, and we're going to store this as the function f at x. Okay. And once you see done, it's done. So now what we can do is we can actually calculate function values. So if I want to calculate uh, the function value at 3.5, I just do, I'll just show you here again. Remember, use your keypad for your letters. So F at 3.5. And there you go. Gives you your answer. Okay. Now we can also use the solve button. So we can go back and go to menu. Okay, solve, and instead of having to either retype uh, the whole equation or copy and paste it, we can just say we want to know when f at x, okay, is equal to, say, 2.7. Oh, and of course, good idea to make a mistake and once in a while because I realized I forgot to indicate that the variable I'm solving for is x. So let's just go put that in and now we get that and again we've got multiple answers so you see again here now we're using uh, 
we're using N5. They're using N5. I guess that's what we've gotten to in our uh, variable list. Okay, and of course, control enter to get the approximated answers. But again, we might not be interested in this function for all values. We might only be interested uh, for this in terms of uh, the values from 0 to 5. So we can define, so next example here is we'll just find that same function uh, from 0 to 5. And we'll see that's very similar to what we did before. Okay, so let's put in the function 3 sine 4x plus 5. And as we did before, such that, okay, Oh, missed it there, such that 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 5. Okay, and we'll define that as, say, our new function g. So, control store, and we'll store that as g at x, and that's done. And so now I can do what I did before, so I can calculate g at 2. Okay, gives me an answer. Again, exact answer. I can always just get the approximated answer or I can have uh, g at 7. Uh oh, uh, that actually was a mistake on purpose. And we see here, remember, we only define g between 0 and 5. Uh, so we don't actually have uh, a value for g at 7. So the last little thing I'll show you is that when you define these functions here, uh, you'll see that we can use them also when we're graphing. So say um, I was going to the graphing app, okay, okay, and say I want to graph that function f at x. It's already stored as f at x. So here f1 is just equal to f at x. And that's the function we had before. Now, of course, the disadvantage here is that uh, the uh, equation is not shown. Okay, so you do have to know what f at x represents. Now, let's so open this up. Let's do control G to open up here. Use our tab to just go up back to the first one. And let's see what happens when I graph G at x. G at x. Okay. And we see that it's that exact same function, uh, just uh, defined from 0 to 5. Okay, and you can change your window to view this better, but uh, you can look on graphing another time. So these are some of the uh, very neat features that the uh, TI Inspire can do, especially if you're on the calculator portion of the AP exam. You shouldn't be solving any of these types of equations by hand. You should be using the Inspire to do the work for you. Okay, thanks, and we'll see you next time.